Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're covering one of the most popular topics in bass fishing. We're talking shaky head worms. The shaky head is a bass fishing staple. Uh, virtually every boat, every angler, everyone throws a shaky head, especially in the summertime. But it is also one of the most misunderstood techniques. And I think that comes from the name, right? Shaky head. Everybody knows that they should have one rigged up. Just about everyone's throwing one. But I think a lot of people just do what the name says. They throw it out there and they shake that worm. And that can work, but there is so much more to this category than that. There are different ways to work the worms, a variety of different worms that work for the technique, key colors. So today we're taking an in-depth look at the shaky head. So to kick this off, I'm gonna kick it off on what you think would be the boring end, and that is the shaky heads themselves, the heads that we use for the technique. On the cover, on the front, that sounds like the boring part. After that, we'll talk baits and gear, and then we'll wrap up with the actual technique of working the baits. Now, trust me, this is not the boring part, and here's why. This is the part where everyone blows it. Uh, now, for the guy who doesn't want to dive down this rabbit hole with me, because you know, when we start into a technique, it can be a rabbit hole. For that guy, I'm gonna make it really simple. If I could only have one setup, one shaky head, this is it right here. This is a Canterbury shaky head, and that's a net bait T Mac worm. June bug, black grape, one of the purple colors on that Canterbury head, and go. If somebody tells me, hey, go grab a shaky head, that's no information given, that's what I grab literally every single time. So that is my staple, my bread and butter. So if you only want one, there you go. Down in the video description, we'll be linking all of this gear in the order that we talk about it, but I'll start with a link for this. Uh, so for the guy who doesn't wanna watch it all, you just wanna know, hey, I, I need to add the shaky head to my lineup, what should I throw? Throw that. Now, from there, we open up a whole can of worms. The reason why I wanna start with heads is because I think that's the first place that most people blow it. Most people have a couple of packs of shaky heads, a few different worms, they put those worms on those heads and they go. Never think twice about it. Well, some of you are catching fish on a shaky head, some of you aren't. Some of the guys who aren't, it's just the head. You're throwing a head with either one way too small of a hook and you can't get it out of the worm and into the fish, or two, you're throwing one on way too big of a hook and it looks like garbage underwater. So the first thing, I hate to say it, but I mean, I own the vast majority of the shaky heads on the market. I just buy tackle. I love tackle. Well, as a result, I get to get down to a really fine detail level with my gear. So I wanna show you something. First off, this one right here. This is the only tungsten option that I use, or at least it's my main tungsten option. This is a Swagger Tungsten Shaky Head. That guy right there uh, is a, it's a three-aught hook, medium wire. It's got a screw lock, and you're going to find there's only one head that I personally use that doesn't have a screw lock. I prefer screw locks. That's what I use. You might be different. You might be old school but I just think screw locks are so convenient, so easy. They line the baits up perfectly, uh, they work. So that is my tungsten head, three-aught hook. This is a Dirty Jigs horseshoe head, stand-up horseshoe, okay? Three-aught heavy wire hook. But I mean, heavy wire is relative. I can set that with some of my lightest spinning rods because again it's only a three-aught hook so those two tungsten lead three-aught hooks okay now for comparison i'm going to move right along so there's the three-aught horseshoe 
the Canterbury shaky head that I said is my all around four aught hook. See the difference? It took me years to notice that difference. I'm kind of embarrassed to say that, but it really did. I think because I didn't use the technique every day, I was one of those guys who had a few worms, a couple of heads, and I just went fishing. I never really paid attention to that hook until I had a great big fish bend me out when I had just reached in and grabbed a random head. Then you start paying attention. So check this out, three aught, four aught. Now there's another four aught, and that is Z-Man's, it's that SMH head that they, they developed for their SMH worm. And we'll come back to worms here in a second. I'll give you examples of all of these. But that one is not a screw lock. And the reason why is that Z-Man's worm is a Laztec. So it does, a Laztec does not jive with screw locks. They just don't work well together. So for a Laztec, you want a traditional style keeper. Everything else I use a screw lock. But both of those are a four aught, okay? So, three aught, four aught. Now, Stand up finesse head. It's again a dirty jigs head. I use mostly dirty jigs heads. The stand up finesse head is a five aught. You can actually see it's a significant difference. Look at the jump from a three aught to a five aught. Massive difference. This matters, and I'm going to show you why in just a second. So three aught, four aught. Now we're at five aught. This is the Magnum horseshoe head, seven aught. Drastically bigger. And then here comes, I switch to owner for the big guys. There's the owner, nine aught. Now, why does that matter? It matters because you can perfectly dial in the specific bait that you like. You don't need all those heads. You're probably not as insane as I am. You probably don't throw all these different worms. So, let's start back at the bread and butter. There's my Netbait T-Mac on the 4 aught Canterbury. Let's go down from there. That's the Netbait Finesse Worm. Another one would be the Zoom Finesse Worm. Those two worms fit so perfectly on a 3 aught hook, and they do not look good on a 4 aught hook. It's just too much hook. It takes up too much of the bait, and it removes most of the action from the bait. The difference is enormous. Now, there's a second benefit. My daughter and I, we love to go down and bank fish. Uh, we go down, walk the dock, bank fish, and we do a lot of that with spinning tackle, right? Sierra loves to throw a spinning rod. So we go down and we do it together. Well, it's way easier for us to set six or eight pound fluoro on a spinning rod, a really soft spinning rod at that, with that three aught hook. So it's a better profile, and I'm able to use lighter gear and lighter line to get more bites with the smaller worm. Go in the other direction. Well, here's that SMH worm on that SMH head. So you can see, again, four aught. That's that old school traditional rigging style. Now let's go up. This is a big bite worm. It's actually an eight inch worm, so just slightly larger than the T-Mac. So four aught, five aught. Now these two, the difference between the four aught and the five aught, so Canterbury Head has a four aught, Stand Up Finesse has a five aught. I go back and forth between those a lot because you can put that five aught in that T-Mac. I can pull it off, it's right on the edge. So my thinking is, am I fishing around mostly smaller fish Clearer water, lighter line, Canterbury every single time. Do I have in the back of my mind that, hey, I'm on good ones and a really big one is probably going to eat the shaky head? Well then by all means, I go with that stand up head, switch to that five aught hook and I just know I have that much more power to put to them when that big one eats. Because sometimes like on a ledge bite, I might know that I'm on a school with big ones in it. And other days I know that I'm, I'm on a school, but there's no big ones in there. At least I don't think there's big ones in there. And going a lighter line might be a big deal. Four aught hook, so much easier. And then going up from there, here's, here's perfect example. 
Strike King's Bullworm. This is the eight inch on a seven aught. See how perfect that looks? I mean, it's no matter what size we go to, whether it's a little finesse worm or a great big bullworm, they're balanced to the size of the bait. The profile is the same, right? The same amount of hook in the bait. You get what I'm, what I'm getting at here? And then here's a big one. So the bullworm comes in an eight and a 10. The eight I throw on a seven knot, the 10 I throw on a nine knot. And then here's a Demiki. This is the Mega Miki. This is the 11 inch. It sits perfectly on that nine knot. The other thing I wanna add is how I rig them. So when I start out, I love to hide the hook completely inside the worm, okay? So when I thread it on, I don't poke all the way through and then skin hook. I just go right through the inside of the worm and I leave it where the hook point is just, just inside the skin. So if I push it all, I'm stuck by the hook point, but it's inside. Now, once I get a few bites, my worm starts to get beat up. Then I pop all the way through and I skin hook. The difference is when I'm inside the bait, it lays perfectly. So as long as I can do that, I will do that. But later on, again, when I have to, then I'll pop through and do a little skin. And then you're just trying to get it as straight as you can. It's never going to be perfect, perfect. But it still looks really good with the skin hook. And then as soon as they eat, that hook points out and I'm stuck. So again, I leave it inside while I can. Once the worm starts to get beat up, pop it through, text pose it. Do that little, that little skin hook on there. So I hope that kind of gives you an idea of how these different heads actually matter. There's a reason there's so many heads and so many sizes on the market. When you put the right size head in the right worm, you get the best action out of the bait. And these are the specific heads that I use. And again, I'll link them down in the description, but I rigged them up on some of my favorite worms. So let's talk the little worms first. I only grabbed two. We've got the finesse worm, which you saw rigged up. And then the other one that I really like on the little head is the robo worm, six inch fat worm. So robo worm, they make like a standard, a thin worm, and then they make the fat in a four and a six. In the six inch, that fat worm is perfect on that three-aught finesse horseshoe head. Uh, it just looks really, really good. And that's one of my favorite colors. Now, we're gonna get to colors. Well, maybe we should just do it now. Rule of thumb, summertime, my number one worm color across the board is June bug. It's a, it's a dark purple, green flake in it. June bug gets big bites, period. It does not get the most bites, at least not every day. Some days it does. But if I was gambling on getting the most bites, I'm, I'm using a green pumpkin type base. Uh, just a very natural, excuse me, a very natural looking worm. But if I want those big bites, it's a purple base. The one exception to that is in Robo Worm, this is the People's Worm. They call it like Pro Staff Special People's Worm. It's a combination of like a oxblood light mixed with a little purple vein. Since I was a kid, I would catch giants on this color. Uh, it's just one of those oddball colors that just gets a big bite. I don't know why, but when I go down to a little tiny finesse worm and I still wanna get a big bite, that's one that I rely on. Now in that mid range, again, here's that SMH worm. So that's, that's that Elaztec worm, throwing stuff around here. So it's a stretchy material, Elaztec, if you're not familiar. So the stuff lasts forever. I mean, you could catch a zillion fish on that setup. You just keep right on trucking. And then my main worm is that T-Mac, the net bait T-Mac. And I grabbed two colors just so you could see them. This is the standard June bug. That's black grape. The biggest difference between them, the base color, the purple, is extremely similar. 
One has that blue and green flake in it. The other one doesn't have any flake at all. Uh, but both work really well, almost interchangeably. But Junebug is just my bread and butter. That's just the one I reach for. And here's that big bite. That's that eight inch. So very similar, very similar profile. But just a little bit bigger all the way around. Sometimes you're just trying to get that slightly bigger bite, but you still want to get numbers of bites. So you don't go to a giant worm, you just go a little bit bigger. Uh, and then on the big end, we've got that, that Mega Miki by Damiki, which is an 11 inch worm, but it's thin. So it doesn't behave like a giant worm at all. I mean, it's, in my mind, it's no bigger than that eight inch Strike King even though it's a much longer worm, there's just not a lot of mass there. It's got a ton of movement, looks really good in the water. It's a big bait, but doesn't have a ton of mass. It, it's a really good option. And then the bull worms, again, the eight inch and the 10 inch bull worm. The 10 inch bull worm, I mean, it's a beast, but we catch them on it. It's, these are my confidence baits. Uh, they just eat them up. So there's a 10 inch bullworm compared to an eight inch. Wow, that one's all mangled in the pack. But look at that compared to that Mega Miki. Even though this is the bigger worm in terms of length, it's nowhere near as big in terms of amount of material. And then one other category here that I think is completely, completely overlooked. Well, I don't think, I know it is. Every single thing I've talked about so far is a straight tailed worm. That's what you throw on a shaky head. But I'll tell you what, there's a time and a place to throw a creature on a shaky head. And there is a time and a place to throw, we'll call them different, really curly tails, but I threw this one in the mix because I've been playing with this one all summer. This is that Nichols tapeworm that we reviewed recently. And if you missed that review, Check this out. So only the upper section of the worm is a traditional worm. Everything after that is paper thin and it's just squared off. But you rig this bait, you put it on a four aught. And this is a 10 inch worm going on a four aught hook because much like that Mega Miki, it's not a lot of worm, even though it's long. So on a four aught hook, a 10 inch worm, check this out. Look at that guy. I rig it so that the hook is sticking out of the flat side, not the thin side. Because when I work it in the water, when I pop it and pull it, I want that ribbon rolling in the water. And if you turn it the wrong way to the thin side, it doesn't work the same. Flat side, that's what you want rolling. It looks so good. Again, this is throwing a little bit bigger bait but I'm able to throw it on a four aught. I mean, I can throw that on eight to 10 pound line, get a ton of bites. And then last but not least is the curly tail. And this is completely, completely overlooked. I just grabbed some of the worms I throw. I mean, in no particular order, big bite, seven inch curly tail, the Kai Tech, the Mad Wags are just killers. Uh, and the culprit. I did so much damage on this culprit worm on a trip with Tim last year. I just walked in a tackle shop and was like, I need a smaller curly tail. We had been throwing a shaky head for days. I mean, we were on a shaky head and a Texas rig bite, but my shaky head fish weren't as big as my Texas rig fish. And I'm like, man, I'm missing something. Let me try a smaller curly tail on the shaky head. So I grabbed a pack of culprits off their wall. I mean, I opened up on those fish, just catching quality fish. I was able to go to much lighter line, um, but still have that curly tail look, a little bit of bonus action. So while the vast majority of my shaky head fishing is done with curly tail worms, and really the vast majority of my shaky head fishing is done with one worm. It really is. I love that T-Mac, but even at that, there is a time and a place to drop that, pick up a curly tail and give that a try. Now, as far as gear goes, this is one of those techniques where I do have a favorite. The first really high-end rod I ever bought was a G Loomis NRX 
852C JWR, 852, two power. That to this day is my favorite shaky head rod, period. I love it. That two power lets me throw up to a five aught hook. Three aught, four aught, five aught, no problem. I pair it up to an Aldebaran uh, braid to leader and it's just an incredible setup. So I throw it on 10 or 12 pound leader and you can just wail on those fish. Now, if I'm throwing the five aught exclusive, actually, let me back up. Obviously that's an expensive combo. So more of a mid-priced combo that will hit similarly. Zodius 610 medium heavy with the Corrado 70 MGL is going to be from an action standpoint, from fighting those fish, all that stuff, a very similar rod. Not as high end, so not the extreme sensitivity, not the extreme lightweight of an Aldebaran and an NRX combo, right? But also not the extreme price. So a rod that will functionally do that same thing, work in that same category, will be a Zodius with a Corrado 70 MGL, and that's an amazing combo. Uh, just great options. And then if I go to the, to the bigger worm, Again, the shaky head to me is still a little finessier than most things. So I'll typically go through to the 853 CJWR. So 852 is my main rod. Then I step up to an 853, just one power up. Uh, and again, braid to leader. And the reason why is that I can hook, I can throw a seven knot hook, no problem on that. I could stick them on the big bait if I have braid. If I'm throwing straight fluoro, the rod doesn't have quite enough horsepower to really plant that hook. But with braid, braid makes up for a lot of things. So even on a three power, that JWR has a unique, it loads up much quicker than say an MBR type rod. And I know for some of you, I'm way over your head now, uh, but just trust me on this. The two power is amazing all around. The Zodius equivalent is gonna be the 610 medium heavy. If I want to throw the bigger worms, I go to a three power and I make sure I'm throwing braid to leader. Now the monster worms, you know, throwing a nine aught hook, just throw it on a jig rod. You know, for me, Omega Bass Brailleist is my favorite all around jig rod. It's great for throwing that too. Um, but at that point, throwing a, you know, 10 or 11 inch worm, big worm on a nine aught hook is that you're at the very extreme of a shaky head, it's a whole nother animal. It's practically throwing a, a big jig, right? It's a big jig hook. Uh, but the bulk of what you're gonna do is in the smaller worms on the lighter rods. And then as far as work in these baits goes, absolutely you can shake them. Throw them out, throw them up against cover and just shake them and let them sit. Shake them, let them sit. But the majority of my bites on a shaky head has no shaking involved whatsoever. I like to pop them or drag them. So dragon is literally just throw it out there, let it hit the bottom and just pull that worm and let it sit. Pull it, let it sit. That's it. I'm somewhere in the middle with my personal fishing. I get the majority of my big bites by throwing that worm and I give it little, it's like a double hop. It's something similar. I do the same retrieve with a jig a lot. So throw it out, let that bait hit bottom, and I just kind of pop, pop, and then let it settle. Pop, pop, let it settle. It's like a crossover between a, a finesse, slow-moving bait and a little bit of a reaction, right? That bait hops up. It's got some actual aggressive movement. So they can kind of choose between. They can follow along, creep on it while it's laying there, or they can be sitting there looking at it and it hops to get away from them and they smoke it. Uh, but I get most of my big bites using that double hop technique. You can fish a shaky head virtually anywhere. You know, you can go down a bluff wall and pitch it. You can throw it up under docks. You can throw them into lay downs. They're weedless. They go virtually everywhere. You can throw them in clear water. You can throw them in muddy water, shallow, deep. That part doesn't matter. How you work it matters. The bait and the color you select matters. And the hook that is overlooked by everybody matters. 
So again, down in the video description, I'm gonna link all the gear for you. The Shaky Ed is a killer summertime bait. If you're not using it, you need to. Uh, as you guys know from a video we did back at the beginning of summer, I will interchange a jig a lot. So if I'm catching a lot of shaky head fish, I put it away and I switch to a jig, try and get a monster bite, unless they're dialed on that worm. But there's a reason we throw that shaky head. Fish love that mid-sized worm in the middle of summer, just like they love giant curly tail worms. And they will mow down a shaky head virtually anywhere you go, anywhere in the world. They just catch fish. Again, I'll link all this gear in the description for you in the order that we talked about it to make it as easy as possible. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.